Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Svenja and here on YouTube I love to share my making and knitting with all of you through podcasts and vlogs. Now it's been a while since I made any type of video, so I thought a little vlog to take you along with me for a few weeks of knitting and some fun other fall adventures would be the perfect way to kick off a fall and the official start of the knitting season. Enjoy! exhausted. Uh, we spent most of the morning and early afternoon there. Um, the Freiburg Fair is a really big state fair. It happens every year in um, like late September, early October for I think a little over a week. And Freiburg is only like 45 minutes from us. So I'm surprised we've never been before. But it's one of the last towns before you cross into New Hampshire. Um, so it's just really a beautiful area and it attracts a lot of people. Um, so it's just a really popular fair to go to. And yeah, we had a really good time. Saw all the things, all the animals, the um, demonstrations, ate a lot of really yummy food. Um, and then we also went to the fiber exhibit or fiber barn, which I sort of expected to be a little bit bigger and have a little bit more yarn um, than they did, but that's okay. It was still really fulfilling. Lots of beautiful like needle felting, um, some spinners there demonstrating um, their craft, and yeah, it was a really good time. My husband picked out one skein of yarn. This is all I came home with, surprisingly. Um, but it's a skein from a farm called Underhill Fibers, um, which is actually in Gorham, which is literally the town next to where I live, so very local. And it's one skein of alpaca and wool in a DK weight, and it's about 20 or 20, 200 yards. So it'll be perfect for. Um, like a ribbed hat. That's what he, he wanted it for is for me to make him a hat this year So this will probably be turned into a nice Christmas present this year and I didn't really buy any other fiber or yarn related things. We got some Maple syrup and maple cream that I really like to put in coffee um, We got this same maple cream as a wedding gift uh, many years ago from a good friend and I've never been able to find it and Yeah, I found it. So I'm really excited about that And yeah, we just had a really great time. I am very full and swollen from all the like salty um good food um lots of variety if you are into fair food and yeah we're finally home and i think i'm just gonna kick back a little bit and watch some football and do a little bit of knitting i forgot to share what i was currently knitting and i took this on the road with me so i got a little bit done um but i am currently knitting Ta-da! kind of looks like a little boat or a, like a banana um, this is the Bindle Bag by Ozetta. It's a um, like little tote bag that you'd like tie into a little bow to fasten it. Um, I have had this in my queue on Ravelry for forever. It's just always been one of those projects I wanted to get around to um, sort of as like a stash busting project and I finally cast on and it's been 
working up really quickly and very enjoyable so far. You can see this like beautiful double moss stitch. The bottom is double knit, so there's two layers, which will definitely add to like the durability um, of this bag. And I'm knitting it in some, um, not scrap yarn, but like yarn I've had in my stash for a long time um, and just really anxious to use up. So this is a skein of Juniper Moon Farms Patagonia which is a DK weight uh, woolen spun yarn, I believe. And this is in the color sand, so like a really nice beige. And then this is a skein of Knit Picks Aloft Mohair. And I believe this is in the color oat. So together they're making a really nice combination. I love like the mohair um, halo. So yeah, I'll get a little bit more done on this. I'm gonna follow the pattern to make the large size and I think I have enough yarn, um, but my goal is to try to use as much as possible so I don't have any scraps. Um, and this will eventually be like a little cosmetic or like hygiene essentials tote that I can take along with me like in my bigger bag when I go to work. So that's what I'm knitting on and we'll hopefully be able to fly through in the next few days. So it's midweek and I'm off from work and sort of having a productive slash relaxing day. I had a lot of errands that I did this morning and this afternoon I uh, planned to just sit out on the porch a little bit and do a little bit of knitting. And I thought it would be a good time to, we'll say, mend or revise one of my most beloved sweaters. We'll get into that in a second. Um, but. If I haven't shared yet on this vlog, uh, I am pregnant. Um, I will be 21 weeks in two days by the, at the time of this filming. And yeah, it's my very first pregnancy and I've been feeling great and very thankful for that. Um, yeah, my, my husband and I are just so excited and happy and I've really been cherishing every single day. Um, it took us a long time to get here. Um, we did struggle with infertility for a few years and I've been very private about that uh, for a long time but more recently felt a little bit more comfortable talking about it and it's actually pretty common. Um, I think one out of eight couples struggle with infertility and it's very much a, um, a lonely problem to have. And as someone who works in healthcare, I really feel it's important to have these conversations and to educate people um, and just to normalize sort of the discussion about infertility in general. So um, it feels a little uncomfortable um, because it has been such a private thing for us. Um, but yeah, we're kind of on the other hump of, other hump, other side of things now. Speaking of humps, I have a bump and that is partly why I'm revising this sweater. Um, so yes, I very much have a little bump here. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm not fitting in any of my pants. Um, I've had to purchase a few pairs of maternity pants just to be comfortable. Um, but that leads me to my next point is that none of my sweaters well, most of my sweaters that I have for the fall and winter probably won't fit by the time that um, I'll be wearing them. So I'm due in February. 
so I sort of suspect that I'll get bigger and bigger through you know the colder months of the year so this year in terms of wearing any of my hand knits um, especially like garments well I guess cardigans will be fine but um, yeah sort of a wash <laughs> but I have one sweater in particular that I've loved for many, many years. This is my sweater number 11 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I knit this a few years ago. Um, I believe it was in Knit Picks, um, Simply Wool Worsted and Aloft. Maybe Aloft, maybe a different mohair. I can't remember, but I love this sweater. I've worn it so much and it's held up so nicely and it's like the perfect like cozy oversized knit and I put it on the other day and thought that I could sort of fix some of the things that I haven't been loving about it while also making it a little bit more like maternity friendly if that makes sense. Um, I haven't found any like maternity you know patterns that I would feel that would be worth investing in knitting. Um, I do want to knit some cardigans this year so I think that would be fine um but in terms of like a like an oversized sweater I feel like this would be a really a good option so there's a few things I want to do and I'll sort of try it on so you can see like before the modifications and then after to see um the transformation so first is this really long uh turtleneck here and it does fold over and I don't typically mind turtlenecks that's sort of how it looks i don't typically mind turtlenecks but this ended up being a little bit too scratchy to wear like right up to my um chin and feels a bit restrictive right now maybe it's just because of like the extra weight um so what i'm planning to do is rip out the turtleneck and just make it into like a nice folded um collar and this is all twisted rib, so the turtleneck, the sleeves, and the hem are all twisted rib, which took forever. And I don't typically mind doing it, but for the sake of time and just ease of, you know, repairing this sweater, I think I'm just going to do an, a normal, like, one-by-one one rib. So that's my first modification. Um, second one I'll do is try to make the hem a split hem. I think that will give me a little bit more room for a growing belly and I might have to crop it just a little bit based on my yarn so that's a, a challenge I may run into is because I am um, you know re-knitting or editing this um, I don't have the yarn anymore so I have to use whatever I salvage um, from fragging it so we'll see how much I have left over I think I'll be okay um you know I, I'm essentially just sort of modifying the fit uh below and I might actually go a little bit shorter so I think I'll have enough yarn um I would love to also do a tubular bind off thankfully I only did like a normal um you know cast off bind off for this entire sweater so hopefully it'll be really easy to sort of undo but we'll see
So we're back and today is the day that I cast on a new fall project and I've been doing a lot of thinking about what to make this fall. I typically have a pretty long list of like wish knits and this year I've tried to narrow things down and keep my knitting plans and goals realistic. Um, so yeah, I've decided on a cabled cardigan and the reason for that is lots of different reasons and we're going to talk about that. So the first reason is my growing body. Um, a sweater probably isn't the most, I'd say, like functional piece to knit this year, um, seeing as I'll be, you know very big like January and February and by the time that I have this baby I'm sure my body will continue to go through changes and by the time that you know I feel a little bit more like my pre-pregnancy self it's already spring and summer so I think I'll forego knitting a sweater which is totally fine I have plenty more seasons to knit all my dream sweaters so this year cardigans have been really popular anyways there's some really great patterns out and so I thought a cabled cardigan would be a really great project for me to sort of sink my teeth into and um, just make something that fits my body now through the rest of this pregnancy and um, kind of gives me like something interesting to work with. Um, I've really been craving cables or like texture or something like that, um, not just like plain stockinette. So I have a few options and I'm going to talk through um, what brought me to the pattern that I've chosen. So I had a few like, you know, categories that this specific pattern or knit had to fall into. First of all, I've knit quite a few cardigans and going through my closet, most are in like the gray family. There's um, like one that's very colorful, but like a gray base. And then I have like a gray tweed one and then sort of a like beige gray cardigan. Um, so I wanted something just a little different color wise. So that was sort of the first need is, is a different color. Um, the second one was a different style. So all of my cardigans are pretty deep v-necks, which is great. I usually wear them open anyways with like a t-shirt underneath. Um, but I wanted something that came higher up. Um, like right up to my neckline and that's just I don't know like a style preference and I wanted this cardigan to be more of like a jacket feel like something I could throw on over maybe like a long sleeve so something a bit more oversized and that sort of put me in like the worsted Aaron category to start looking for patterns so those were sort of my three asks so well cabled cardigan um, not gray, uh, coming up to the neck and then like sort of chunky oversized jacket feel. So I did a lot of research on Ravelry and the first pattern that really appealed to me was the Athens cardigan by Manmi Choi. And I actually bought this pattern because I loved it so much. It is a I'll just pop up a little picture here and tell you about the, the pattern because I do plan on making this, but it's not the ultimate one that I chose. So it's a top-down cardigan. It's got these great like um, diamond cardigans, but I think it's double mastich in between and these like little bobbles, which I'm not sure if I would make the bobbles or not. Sometimes I'm a fan, but others I'm like, I don't know. I don't love them all the time on every single pattern. Um, it's definitely got like texture enough cables to satisfy that aspect of this knit for me and then there's two different necklines I think this was this pattern was updated at some point and so they she added like another neckline which I actually really like the higher neckline um, that gives it sort of more of that jacket feel and it is knit in a I guess an Aran oh no it's a worsted so a DK plus a lace weight yarn um, knit on a US 7 or 8 needle. So yeah, it could be, I guess, more of a jacket feel. Um, a little bit heavier. 
yeah, so that was my first option. Um, the second one I found, and this is super popular, is the book club cardigan, which doesn't necessarily meet all of my needs, um, but it was a very strong contender. So sorry, Nordlin, known for her beautiful textured designs. I've actually never knit one of her patterns, I think. I've just like, you know, admired them from afar and I feel like I have, maybe. I don't know. I'll have to look. I don't, I actually don't think I have. Um, but the book club cardigan came out, I believe in the spring of this year and got a lot of hype. Um, it's just like the perfect cabled cardigan in my opinion. I just love the way this looks. I think it's just so classic. I love the pockets. I know that that's sort of controversial. People liking pockets on cardigans or not, but I like them. I think it adds something extra special. Again, diamond card or uh, diamond cables kind of up and down the front, lots of double moss. Um, of course, this has that like deeper v-neck. Um, it's not terribly deep. She has one picture where she kind of wears like the button sort of like mid chest. So that could work. Um, and it looks a little cropped in the photos. And when I went through the Ravelry project search, uh, it seemed like most people were struggling um, in terms of yardage, they needed quite a bit more yarn to knit this. Um, so I think if I were to knit this, I would plan to make it a little bit longer. And yeah, this was a strong contender. Um, it is also a lace plus sport weight, which equals a worsted weight, so sort of on the heavier end. Um, so while I was trying to commit to a pattern, um, Petit Knit, who is my favorite designer, posted a little teaser of her newest pattern, the Dagmar jacket. And I knew when she, you know, posted this that this was the cardigan. This was just meeting all of my needs. It's perfect. And that's ultimately what I chose. So this is um, a little bit more of a jacket style because it's in an Aran weight yarn and it um, has these diamond cables again but it has a little extra like twist between them which I find really interesting there's a great honeycomb stitch pattern which is so much fun to knit and like see come to life as you're making it and then I know it's really simple but using toggles instead of buttons I know it's an easy modification to make but it's just like something extra special that I have never done before I've always wanted to use toggles on something um it just it feels like a little vintage or like 90s almost uh maybe even older than that I don't know it just gives a little bit more of like that like classic cabled feel um so yeah and the special thing too is that my mom's name is Dagmar so it just felt really you know right that I make this so this is the pattern that I chose. I still technically need to purchase it and like read through it. Um, however, when I was looking for yarn um, for this, I did like an extensive search to find something very similar to the recommended yarn that she uses, which is the um, Hellholt Triple, which is a new, um, a newer yarn by uh, Hellholt uh, Old Spindery. Um, in Denmark and I thought for sure I'd have a difficult time getting my hands on that yarn just because it's um, new you know it's not available in the United States yet so I really did a deep dive on like a comparable yarn and I had a really hard time finding something um, that was similar it's a worsted spun it's an Aran weight yarn um, I considered Cascade, um, but I just didn't find like the color that I wanted. And again, I didn't want something like gray. I didn't really want cream colored. And one of the colorways in this new yarn, it was just like the perfect brown. It's like an ashy brown. And so I waited a few weeks and I ultimately found it um, from a company called Garntopia, which I've never ordered before. I believe they're from Norway. And I ordered it. I ordered myself a whole sweater quantity of this. 
and it's here in this box and we're gonna open it together which is something I've never done I've never done like a blind like unboxing so to speak um, but I'm just really excited to use this yarn and um, knit myself this like one really special piece for this season so let's go ahead and open it All right, checking in with a little bit of progress um, in terms of my knitting projects over the last few weeks. I last vlogged, I think it was like four or five days ago maybe, um, I was knitting a swatch for the Dagmar jacket and it's just been a regular like work week for me so I've been doing a little bit of knitting before work and then after work and I've made some significant progress on some projects. So I have a little stack of my knits here that I'm gonna show you. First is my finished bindle bag. So this is how it came out. It's really cute. I really loved knitting this project. Um, so it's a bag. If you can see that, obviously. Um, so yeah, so it it's, it's great. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, it's very, very drapey, so it doesn't have a ton of structure. Um, but what I've been doing is just sort of like tying it in a little double knot like this obviously after I fill it with things and yeah, it's very functional. I'm a big fan. I'll probably be knitting some of these as like gifts. Um, I've been storing like my cosmetics, hygiene things, um, like products in it. And yeah, I'm very, very happy with this. So that's the bindle bag. It's a pattern by Ozetta. Highly recommend. It was super fun and a great stash busting project. So that's all done. And then I have been working on modifying my sweater number 11 by my favorite things knitwear. And so far I have gotten the color done. So I showed earlier in this vlog that I wasn't too happy with like the turtleneck. Um, so I modified it to be a double knit, like single one by one ribbed um, neck band. And I picked up the same amount of stitches that I had had on my needles for the turtleneck, which in hindsight, I probably would have picked up a little bit less um, because at first this, like when I did the double knit, there were so many stitches that it sort of like flared out and it just didn't like sit right. Um, but what I did was I um, sewed in like a little uh, clear elastic into the top part of the collar and I just kind of like cinched it which when I tried it on it was too tight so I removed that but since it sort of like held its shape which is kind of odd um but either way I'm gonna try it on in a second uh, after I th talk through some of the other modifications so that was the first one I split the hem so there's sort of my split so instead of a like a solid um ribbed hem uh, I just went back I undid it and uh, then knit you know the front in one by one and I bound off in a tubular bind off and I struggled a lot because I only have so much yarn because I don't have any leftovers so I have to use what I already have in this pattern which it's like coming down literally to the wire like this is all I have left so I'm on the back end or back um, hem right now and I could probably bind off so it would be equal but I feel like 
using as much yarn as possible will be um, in my best interest to try to get a little bit of a longer hem in the back. I honestly don't know if it's making much of a difference in terms of giving more room for a belly, but I get that on. We'll, we'll find out. And then my original plan was to also re-knit the sleeves, which originally I did in a twisted ribbed, all of the ribbed, um, like, finishing uh and this sweater is a twisted rib which took forever um so i was not gonna go and do that again but i actually kind of like um the sleeves of where they're at right now they're maybe a little bit shorter than i wanted but i do like kind of like bracelet length sleeves like ones that i can sort of push up and have my hands free and that's sort of where things are sitting right now i might block this again and see if I can stretch them out a little bit more um, also to make a, like a little bit more room in my belly but we'll see I'm also like I think sick of um, undoing this uh, rib like unraveling it because it's mohair it's like really catching on itself and I um, yeah I'm just getting a little bit tired of that so Either way, I think the biggest modification was probably the neckband. So if I'm happy with that, this was worth um, mending and altering. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. I'll try it on though and overlay some images of like how it's fitting now. And then I'll probably block it and um, then show you the finished project. And then lastly, I have some really great progress on my newest fall cast on, uh, the Dagmar jacket by Petite Knit. I went into detail about why I chose this cardigan, but I just fell in love with like every aspect of it from um, sort of the design to the cables. Um, so either way, I knit a swatch and this is how it came out. I don't know if you can see that. But that's my swatch and it met gauge like right away like I was very happy with it as I was knitting it um, but I did make sure to wet block it because I usually wet block everything so I wet blocked it and yeah I'm very happy with the gauge I'm using a US size 7 needle to knit this which is I believe what's recommended I usually meet gauge with whatever petite knit um, recommends we just seem to have like similar tension and then I cast on and I made a lot of progress in just this is like probably four days of knitting so yeah it's this is the back and I am already at the point of holding the back um, onto a like spare needle or a um, like a cable and then starting to pick up for the front uh, placards. So this has been really, really fun to knit. Like I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. It's like simple enough, um, but you know, detailed enough where like I have to look at the instructions a little bit to make sure I know where I am, but intuitive enough that like I'm still, you know, watching a show or listening to an audiobook and like can easily knit this without a ton of concentration. Um, I have had to re-knit a few uh, rows just because of like little errors, but it hasn't been too painful. And I'm really, really loving this yarn. It's like exactly what I was hoping for. It's very rustic, but not like super itchy. Um, so it's definitely got that like sheepy, toothy quality. Um, and it's an Aran weight yarn and it's, it's, um, it's worsted spun and uh, very like round and shapes the cables really nicely. So I'm, I'm just really, I'm really, really pleased. It's got a bit of a heathering like effect to it as well, which I, I'm just, I'm clearly very happy. I've said this a million times. Now. Yeah, I'm very happy with my yarn choice. I think it was definitely worth holding out for this yarn. And yeah making really great progress i'm really excited to pick up the sleeves which i'm hoping to start tonight and um surprising right surprisingly working up like super quickly so maybe i can get this done in like a few weeks which would be very impressive we'll see
checking in with a little update on my sweater number 11 remake um it's done it is fresh off the blocking mat still a little damp but dry enough to wear and sort of try on for size i'm overall super pleased with how this came out i think the biggest um notable like change was probably the neckline um this just seems like a much more like easy to wear sweater now that the neckline neckband isn't so restrictive um so i definitely think that doing that was probably the biggest change um and then i gave it a little bit of a split hem which has made a little bit more room for my belly um it's not that much different but i did give it like a really um aggressive wet block uh, i just like left it soaking for a few hours and then really tried to stretch it out a little bit more so i have a little bit more length than i did prior which i'm really pleased about and then i ended up leaving the sleeves the same i didn't um i honestly like ran out of energy and motivation to keep working on this so i was fine with the sleeves to start i, I really liked sort of the bracelet length and um, yeah, overall, I'm really pleased with this project and I'm excited to have a cozy, like, oversized sweater to wear this season. And then in terms of more knitting progress, I've been knitting, like, feverishly on some projects, um, mainly my Dagmar jacket, which I've made some serious, uh, progress here. So, the last I showed you, I think I was like halfway through the back. So the back is currently on hold. And then I picked up the right front. And that is now currently on hold as well as I start to knit the left. So this has been so fun to make. I am like loving the process of this. I feel like I'm partly like a process knitter, part finished object knitter. And this one is just really like... I don't know, it's just a really enjoyable process so far. I have had um, a little trouble with the cables on the front. Um, I've had to re-knit them a few times. Um, and that's, I think, because I've been watching like scary movies at night and then I like get a little distracted and forget where I am and it's also dark and I'm like using my little knitting light so I can't like see that well and then I'll be like an inch further into the pattern and I realize I made a mistake a few rows back so I I frog it and then I re-knit it and that's I've probably done that like four or five times but either way it's still been super enjoyable I sort of laugh at myself when that happens now but anyways I'm I'm pretty shocked with how quickly this is working up I think maybe in a couple weeks I could even have this done which would be really nice for like the rest of fall um it's currently October 16th 17th and we're sort of nearing like you know the leaves are starting to re I think they're probably past peak um but soon enough they'll be falling and then we'll have like early winter weather so I would love to have this um to be able to wear sort of as like a late fall jacket so I'm probably going to focus mostly on this and I have a couple other exciting like projects on my mind and in my to-do list um, which I'll likely share in like a podcast that I plan to film in probably a couple weeks. So anyways, thanks for hanging out with me and um, wherever you're watching from, I hope that you're getting like a little bit of fall weather or at least uh, can pretend that it's fall and you get some of those cozy vibes with like pumpkins and apples and just like warm cozy feels which is such a nice time of year so again thanks so much for watching and yeah I'll see you next time bye